Good morning, 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 good morning. Glad to be with you guys on this morning. Amen. As we get ready to finish in our series of study this week, amen, as we deal with the word stability, I'm grateful and thankful, amen, that God woke me up to this brand new Wednesday morning, amen, and I'm excited about it, amen, this is Wednesday that I've never seen before, amen, and when I'm finished with it, it'll be a Wednesday that I'll never see again, but the blessing of it being a Wednesday I've never seen before means God's given me a chance to do something that I've never done before, go where I've never gone, achieve what I've never achieved, and walk through what I've never walked through, amen, and grab what I've never been able to grab, amen, and I'm thankful because when I woke up this morning, I didn't have to go look for the sun, I didn't have to go look for oxygen, I didn't have to go look for any of the things that God told me would be there daily, which shows me God is still in control, God is still in the wonder working business, amen, and as long as I continue to hear testimonies, I know that God is still doing in people's lives, amen, and that's enough for me to be excited, which is why we can consciously say that this is the day the Lord has made, I shall be glad, <clears throat> I shall be glad, sound like a shower, you. <laughs> I, I, don't, I mean, maybe I need to change when I'm doing something, that sound a little better, hey, this is the day the Lord has made, I shall be glad and rejoice in it, amen, I can consciously say that because I understand Amen. The God in which I serve, the God in which I walk with, amen, said he will never leave me nor forsake me, amen, that he will be with me until the end. So as we continue this week, man, we started dealing with stability. Started dealing with stability, having something to stand on, amen. First day we used our, our foundational scripture, we went to James. James showed us some stuff and told us, amen, how we have to believe, how we can't be double-minded, being thrown to and fro. Then yesterday, we saw the double down. Yesterday, we saw the double down. Went to Philippians, and Paul told us about how it's important for us to take them worries and cares and, and put that stuff in God's hand, put it to God in prayer, so that it isn't uh, weighing us down and, again, affecting our mind, right? Then we, when we came out of that yesterday, we talked about how the enemy appeal has to be to your flesh. Listen, there's nothing he can do about the promise that's on your life. Oh, his, his only objective is... It's to get you to get off course. Don't miss that. He can't do anything about what God promised. So I, 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 something I want us to challenge us with this week is, I know a lot of times we, you know, we find ourselves saying stuff like, you know, oh, the devil busy, right? But God ain't on vacation. And he can only appeal to our flesh. So really, all he trying to do is survive. But if, as long as I allow God to work in me, it don't matter what he try to do, I'm going to be all right. Right. And, and that's why it becomes important for us to make sure we got that word in so that when the pressures of life are applied, we got something that can then pour out. So this morning, this morning, for those of you that can, amen, join me in Matthew 4. We're going to look at an interesting set of scriptures. And I'm going to show you how the enemy can only appeal to your flesh because that's all he got to offer. All he can do is appeal to your flesh. That's all. He, he can't give us anything spiritual. He can't give us anything that's going to last because he don't have it to give. So the only thing he can do is trick us with things of our flesh. That's why he comes at you with the things. That's why he can come at you with the things that you need at that moment. It's, it's not even don't miss, it's, it's not even about what I'm going to need in the future. He can only offer me what he see me need in that moment because that's all he can give. That's why he tried to take those small moments and make them huge mistakes that have forfeit my future. That's why he does what he does in those moments to get me to forfeit my future. That's why he's going to come at you to tempt you and throw you off with something you need now, not even thinking about what's coming down the road because that's not the way he operate. If I can throw you off right now, then maybe you'll miss what you've been praying for. If I can throw you off right now, may, matter of fact, maybe you'll go against what it is you've been praying for. If I can throw you off right now, maybe you won't even worry about what you've been praying for. That's the way he operates because he can't do anything else. So watch in Matthew 4, watch in Matthew 4. The Bible say, then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now, the interesting part here is it didn't tell us he was tested by the devil. See, there's a difference between testing and tempting. Testing is about building your faith. Tempting is about separating us from God. Don't miss that. God doesn't tempt us. God will test us. If the thing draws you away from God is temptation. The enemy will tempt us 
because he recognizes temptation is connected to our flesh. There's, there's, there's going to be an earthly need that we have to feel, right? There's, there's going to be an earthly need that we have to fill, and those are the things that he'll offer. So watch what he offers Christ. So we, we learn that the spirit led him into the wilderness. Now watch this. Scripture says that there's no temptation that God has not already provided a way out. There's no temptation that God has not already prov uh, provided a way out. In 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, he says, uh, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted above your ability. But with the temptation, he will always provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. So watch this. Whatever the enemy is going to tempt you with, God already telling us that, listen, I'm, I'm already going, I've already given you a way out. You already have enough of me in you that, that when that thing show up, you have a way to get out of it. Not only that, but he said, I'll also even never let him tempt you on a level you ain't ready for. Which means I'm not going to let him hit you with a temptation that's, that's so, so out of bounds that it's really a trap. So everything we walk into, we got the strength to get past. Let me go and keep going to Matthew 4. It's about to get good. The Bible said, watch this. After he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Don't miss that part. After he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Now, what have I been saying? He can only appeal to our flesh. He can only appeal to our fleshly desires because he has amazing contact with flesh. That's, that's all he can do. Watch what he does. Then the tempter approached him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. What did I just say? He can only apply to our flesh. So when he comes, here's how you quickly know. He can only appeal to what you need at that moment. Christ is hungry. Look what he say. Man, turn these stones into bread. You know? Come on, man. You do that. Come on, man. But watch, watch, watch what he put on the front of the front end. If you're really the son of God, you can turn these stones into bread. But if Christ turns the stone into bread, then he defaults the promise that's on his life. Because instead of him dealing with temptation like we would have to deal with it, this would have caused him to go against God's plan for his life because he would have then allowed the deity in him to do something to have him escape what he should have went through naturally as a man. Don't miss this. So what the enemy wants us to do, he wants us to try to shortcut and uh, circumvent whatever process God is bringing us to because he's like, man, ain't no sense of waiting on it, man. Go on, call, go on, go on, get it done like this. But watch what Christ answered him. Christ answered him and said, he said, he answered, it is written. Oh, come on, don't miss that. That's why I talked about we got to make sure we put that word in because there's going to be a time in life that that word got to come out. The only thing that can come out of me is what I put in me. So if the trials and pressures of life are applied and I don't got no word in, then guess what? When I'm being squeezed, can't no word come out. You can't never get cream out of jelly donut. Help me out, somebody. You can't never get chocolate out of jelly donut. You can only get out of it what's been put in it. So when he squeezes Christ, they say, listen, man, I know you're hungry. Go, go don't forfeit your promise. That, that vision God gave you. Go on forfeit that purpose. Go, go on forfeit that future you pray for for your kids. Man, go on and take this quick thing I got for you right quick. Come on, come on, come on. Do this quick thing right quick. Don't even, don't, don't even worry about that stuff you pray for. Don't even worry about that stuff that you ask God to do. Man, come on, get this right quick in your system. Pay attention to the appeal. He can only appeal to our flesh. Watch what he tells him. He says, it is written. Man must not live on bread alone, but every word that comes out of the mouth of God. That if I settle for every little thing you give me, then what do I leave place for the word? I need somebody to talk back to me. If if I settle on every if I settle on everything you give me, then how in the world can I say God gonna supply my needs? But I'm allowing you to pacify me with stuff I, I, I crave for at the moment. How, how can I say God supply my needs when every time I'm in the need of something, I always take the shortcut and I never wait on God? Then that means God isn't supplying my needs. 
Am I saying in all things work together for the good of them who love the God? But then how come every time I get in a bad situation, I find my way to follow my flesh and get out of it that way? Then I can no longer say God is working it for my good because in essence, I'm working it for my good. And in essence, I'm allowing the enemy to work it for my good. I'm allowing the enemy to supply my needs. Therefore, I'm not even following the word in which I'm talking about, which is why Christ said man can't live off of bread alone because if all I do is chase bread, Okay, if all I do is chase the bag, if all I do is chase this, and all I do is chase that, how in the world I got room for God? How can I put God in the midst if every time I'm running after something, I'm running after something earthly. Every time I'm running after something, I'm running after something according to my flesh. That's the reason he keep being able to tip me with it. That's the reason he keep being able to reach me because I'm running after everything that's connected to the earth. But yet I say, God supply my needs. How, Sway? If every time I'm in a situation where God needs to show up and God is going to show up, the enemy is going to come with a short answer. And here's the thing I want you to remember. It'll never satisfy you. Don't miss this. The enemy can never satisfy you. All he can do is pacify you. I, I used this analogy before. One of the things that's interesting to me is when the baby's young, when they're a baby and infant, toddler stages, right? I was big on it. My kids were young. Boy, I was the pacifier. King. What? Man, my daughter wake up in the middle of the night crying. Boy, I'm going to run to the store and get a pacifier. You no, know, that was back when stores open 24-7. I don't know what happened in this new new ones. But boy, I run to the store in the middle of the night. Boy, I'm going to get that pacifier. What? Man, I'm not, I'm not about to deal with this all night. But the interesting thing about a pacifier, nothing comes out of it. Don't miss your part. All that pacifier do is keep you busy. Ooh, hoo, hoo. can I push this a little bit right here early? Can I push it? Can I push it? All the enemy can do is keep you busy. It ain't even productive, but he's going to keep you busy. It, it ain't even working towards your goals, but he's going to keep you busy. Because there's nothing he can do about the promise. That's why he can only appeal to our flesh. That's why he can only appeal to us in those moments that we have a, 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 a quick earthly urge a quick earthly need that's all he can fix but that's why we're working on being stable so that i'm not moved every time the wind blows so i'm not moved every time something ain't going right i'm not moved every time it haven't fallen into place in the time in which i wanted to i got something to stand on and that's what christ said hold up man man can't live off of bread alone but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of god if i keep chasing this then how i'm gonna get what god got and if i keep getting what you got i ain't never gonna get what god got and i'm wondering why i'm never satisfied i'm wondering i I'm wondering why I'm never full. I'm wondering why things are never happening in a complete manner. I'm wondering why I got all of these pieces of things left over that I have not completed, that I have not worked through, that I have not touched. I'm wondering why I'm always force-fitting things. I'm wondering why I'm always trying to put stuff together and don't go together because I keep allowing him to give me pieces. But if I could just wait on God, if, if I can just wait on God to do what God going to do, then maybe some of this stuff going to start to make sense. Maybe some of this stuff going to start to come together. Maybe those dreams, those visions I have, maybe that stuff will start to happen. Maybe the vision and purpose that God got for my life, maybe that thing to come in a manifestation. Maybe I can fix my kids. Maybe I can fix my family. Maybe I can fix my community if I sit around and allow God to do what he do. And instead of jumping to these urges and these impulses, because that's nothing but the enemy applying to my flesh. Oh, let me keep going and get better. He didn't stop there. The Bible said, then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, draw yourself down for it is written. Don't miss this. If Christ goes to the top of this thing, throw himself down. He will literally be stepping out of humanity, jumping into deity. Because watch what the enemy says. He said, throw yourself down for it is written. He will give his angels orders concerning you. And they will support you and with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Now, what, what, what he's trying to get him to do is listen. Well, you know God going to look out for you anyway, right? So, if he going to look out for you, then man, go and call, water. You know what I'm saying? Go call, girl. Get that money from him, right? 
I, I know you say you weren't going to call no more. I know you say you know you, you straighten your life up. But I mean, God going to look out for you anyway, right? He said he was going to give you the $20. He said he was going to get you the $50. So you might well call her and go get it. What you waiting on? I mean, if you get caught, <laughs> can't God get you out of it? <laughs> I mean, hey, I mean, you know what I'm saying? If, if, look, man, if it don't work out right, I mean, can't God. Come on, man, you can make this last little run. Come on, man, get this last little thing right quick. You can, what you, I mean, it, come on, man, you say God can get you out of jam. So if you end up in the jam, can, can God get you out of it? I mean, come on, man, you going to call, boy. I know, I mean, I know you know, I, I know you say you were done with him. I, I know you know, but 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 them kids need school uniforms. And you around here doing all this praying. You know, ain't nobody showed up yet. Go on, go on. I know you blocked the number, going on, I'm, I'm blocked the number, make the call. I don't know. And, and what you got to pay attention to is, he always talks in a convincing voice. He never stops. He, he just continues to talk in a convincing voice till he gets you to see it his way. Go, go ahead on, take the number off block, man. What you tripping for? I mean, because God can save you, right? So don't even trip. So if it happens, if it go down crazy, all you gotta do is pray your famous prayer again. Just just ask him to get you out of it again. You could go ahead on and do it. Don't even, man, don't worry about that, man. I know, listen, I know that was a crazy thing that happened last time, man. But don't trip. Go ahead on try it again. Go ahead, go ahead on, go ahead on do it again. Notice what he's trying to get him to do. Jump off this building like you're committing suicide, but then tell the angels to come get you. Because the pressure of life is so much to you that Christ, I need you to jump. But if Christ jumps and then have angels pick him up, that then give us the impression that we can jump and then have angels pick us up. But watch Christ answer. He says, Jesus told him, it is also what? Written. It is also where? In the book. It's also where? In scripture. Do not test the Lord your God. In other words, if I know God told me don't go there, if I know God told me don't do it, I'm testing God if I say, well, I'm going to go do it. And if I get caught, God got me. No, man. If he say don't go, we got to be stable enough. We have to be strong enough in our faith, strong enough in our belief, stand on the word to the point where I say I ain't going. I ain't going. Listen, I, I told God I wasn't going there. I ain't going. Even though I know he can save me. Even though I know he can come get me. Even though I know he can get me out of that. But let me save that card for the situation I can't control. Let me save that card for the situation I'm really not that strong in. Let me save that card for, for when I for when I feel like I'm forced and I've lost my mind. Let me save that card for that moment. Not for these moments I can get through. Not for these moments I can pass through. And why is he doing it? He's doing it because he's trying to prevent you from getting to where God calling you to go. He's trying to prevent you from walking into your purpose. He's trying to prevent you from a walking according to that passion. He's trying to prevent you from getting to where it is that God is taking you. That's why he appeals to our flesh because his goal is can I throw you off in the moment? If I can throw you off now, then maybe you'll forget that prayer. If I can throw you off now, maybe you forget what God showed you. If I throw you off now, maybe you won't even worry about what God got because I got you so bogged down with today. Here's the part I want to get you. That's the reason his goal is to put us into survivor's mode. That's the reason his purpose is to give us anxiety. That's the reason his purpose is to put us in the mode of depression. Because he wants us to think that we have no other help. He wants us to think that there is no other way. He wants us to think that we're drowning. He wants us to think that the walls are closing in. He wants us to think that this thing is almost over. He wants us to think that there's no way out. Because if he put us in the jam where we feel there's no way out. And we feel nothing is going to come. Then we might might just take him up on his offer and that's all he's trying to do but remember he can't sustain it which means he can't satisfy it he can only pacify it. he can only give you something for the moment please my brother please my sister don't forfeit your future over a moment my brother please don't kill your marriage over a moment my sister, please don't carry your, kill your marriage over a moment. Please, please don't throw your kids away over a moment. Not, 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 not a moment. A moment don't even last that long. I, I know it feel like you've been there for forever, but, but in, in actuality, it really don't last that long. It's, it's, it's just in your face right now. It's just in front of you right now. But we got to stop throwing away our future for a moment. And that's all he wants to do. He wants us to throw away our future chasing behind moments. Chasing behind moments is like chasing behind pieces. 
And if I keep chasing pieces, all I'm going to end up with is pieces, and then ain't none of them pieces going to match. I, I, I know somebody who does a lot of shopping. And uh, I, I, it's, it's the funniest thing to me. It's the funniest thing to me, right? Uh, they always go to the sales rack, clearance rack. I mean, bottom bargain deal. That's where they go, right? And they'll say, oh, I like that shirt. I buy the shirt. Oh, I like those pants. I'll buy the pants. And then I'll see this person put this outfit together. And I'll be like, man, that, that outfit don't even go. And here's what they'll say. I like the shirt. I like the pants. <laughs> I said, but the pieces don't match. I like the shirt. And I like the pants. And I said, maybe you need to start buying some stuff that go together. Even if it ain't on sale. Or if you find something on sale, buy some stuff that go together. Too many times, that's how we are. We just grab what we like. We keep grabbing what we like, but we don't even know what it does to our spirit. We, we, we keep grabbing what it like, but we don't even know how it affects our future. We keep grabbing what we like, but we don't even know how it affects our prayer. And then we put all this stuff together, and we wonder why it don't nothing jail. I'm preaching better, y'all shout. And we wonder why it don't nothing jail, because we keep running behind pieces, because all the enemy can do is appeal to our flesh, which is to offer us pieces. And the pieces he's offering is only based on how you feel at the moment. You ain't even going to feel like that tomorrow. You ain't even going to feel like, okay, 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 okay. Here's how I know that to be true. You ever did something, and then the next day be like, man, why in the world? Now you got to figure a way to get out of what you got yourself in that you said you weren't going to get yourself in. Because it was only for the moment. Have you ever did something and then realized, man, I don't even really like them like that. <laughs> man, I don't even really like that like that, right? That's all he was trying to get Christ to do. Can I get you to jump out of your purpose? Can I get you to jump out of your destiny? Can I get you to jump out of your providence? Can I get you to jump out where God is taking you and just take me up on my offer? Again, third time, third time's the charm, right? The devil took him to a very high mountain. Watch this. And showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, I will give you all these things if you will fall down and worship me. Mm. Watch this. Whatever the enemy gives you always come with a cost. Ooh. Let me get this thing. His cause always got some details in the fine print that you'll never read. You know how folks use the analogy that the devil's in the details? It really is. It, 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 it actually, that's, that's, that's where the devil's at. It's, it's, it's in the details. But the goal is, hopefully we skim past it without reading the fine print. Hopefully we skip past it without reading that little bit. Let me say something to you. If it's on a contract, it's important. If it's on the paperwork, it's important. And what the enemy is banking on is that we won't read. That we won't read into a thing. What he's banging on is that we won't read the details. What he's banging on is that we won't sit back and see where this is going to bring us. What he's banging on is that we won't look into the details. What he's banging on is that we don't do what the scripture says, which is a wise man look well into his look well into a matter. He's banking on us making an impulsive decision and take him up on his offer, not realizing what it's going to cost us. He literally tells Christ, I'll give you all of this if you bow down and worship me. Well, what happens if I bow down and worship him? I literally make him Lord over me which then separates me from God which then kills that vision that God gave me which then kills that dream God gave me because I'm deciding that I no longer want what God got I want what he got now here's what's interesting there's nothing that he owns so what can he give me nothing but a lie I'm gonna say it again in case you miss it there's nothing he can give me nothing but a lie can I go and knock on somebody's door this morning? That's why certain folks, the only way they're able to get into your space, they have to manipulate you. They have to con you. They have to sweet talk you. They have to speak a whole bunch of sweet nothings that never amount to who they are and they can never do the things they told you. Why? Because they don't possess it to be able to do it. They're nothing but a pawn. They're nothing but an agent of the enemy to get you off track. And don't miss this. The only reason he's showing up because he see God got glory on you. The only 
only reason he's showing up because he see that God's about to do some stuff. The only reason he's showing up because he know God got you in the palm of his hand. And his goal is to separate you from God just like he separated. You know how we say misery loves company? Well, that comes from the enemy because he recognizes he can never have the relationship with God we have. His job now is to separate us from God just like he is. That's why he offer you stuff that don't amount to them. That's why he'll talk you out of everything you've tried to build yourself on. You say, I'm trying to hold on to my standards. You say, I'm trying to hold on to my value. You say, you trying to hold on to who you are. Then here comes this sweet talking, good looking devil to talk you out of everything you said you was going to stand on. Talk you out of everything you made your mind up and say you wasn't going to do. That's how you know the enemy works. He will literally appeal to the thing you just said I'm not going to do. He show up to get you to do it because if I can get you to go against yourself enough times you'll forget about who you are. If I can get you to go against yourself enough you'll lose value in yourself. If I can get you to go against yourself enough you'll look at yourself in the mirror and not even know who you are. That's the way he operates and his goal is can I get you to come bow down? Yes, Christ he said I'll give you all of this if you worship me. <laughs> Details. Don't miss this. Details. Taking what he got going to cost you your life. Can I, can I push it? Can I push it? You got to ask yourself. Can I afford to lose my peace? Matter of fact, let me, let me, I'm sorry, let me, let me, let me back the call up. And then let me, let me, let me, let me, let me back. I'm going to come back to that point, but let me back the call up. Here's my question to you. Give, give me, give me an answer if you can. What does the devil look like? Can somebody, can somebody root on me that? What does he look like? Hmm. Now I'm going to get to the last part of March way. The last part of March way. What does he look like? What 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 what, what does he look like? Cuz this this important. This is important. Because if we don't get this part, this how we missing. What does he look like? What what does he look like? What does he look like? What does he look like? This is what I talk back to, man. What, what does he look like? Okay. Facebook, give me an answer. What does he look like? I, I, got, I got a couple goons on Instagram. What, what, what does he look like? Here's how we miss him. I'm about to, I'm about to help you out this morning. I'm about to give you the Rubik's Cube this morning. If, if you don't write down nothing else, I say I want you to write down this next thing. What does he look like? Oh, man. I got some good ones. Ludo said, look just like us. True that. True that too. All the things you want that are not in the plan of God. I like that. Us walking on earth don't have no definite face. Here's what he looks like. Y'all ready? Anything. Anything. Here's how you know it's him. Look at them characteristics. Watch this. He can look like anything, but the characteristics are the same. My big cousin nailed it. It's everything to take you away from what you pray for. Okay, okay. Now, now since I got that, let me come back to that point. This how we miss him. We think he look evil. We think he look bad. No, she can look good. He can look good. That car can look good. That house can look good. Come on. That job can look good. That, that, that quick money scheme can look good. Come on, somebody talk back to me. It can always look good. It, now watch this. It ain't going to never be ugly. Nah. Because if it's ugly, we... See, cause lot, cause, see, see it's, it always has to look like what you want. So he can look like anything. Not even just a human. He can look like anything. He look like anything to everything to take you away from what you pray for. That's how you know it's the enemy. If you just pray for peace and then something shows up to take your peace, that's the devil. Watch this. Here's why I can't just say it's people. Because he's not a person. He just uses things. 
That's why Peter said he's as a roaring lion, which means he's a shapeshifter. So sometimes he can be in your kid. Sometimes he can be in your mate. Sometimes he can be in your supervisor. Sometimes he can be at your job. Sometimes he can be in that car. Sometimes he can be that house you want. Sometimes he can be that outfit you want. Sometimes he can be the thing that's going to walk you away from what it is he got. But if I keep looking at him as a person, if I keep looking at him to be something, that's how we miss him. That's how we end up sleeping with the enemy. That's how we end up making deals with the enemy. But the devil is in the details. But if I don't take time to get to the details and I'm impulsive, I'm going to miss it every time. See, it, watch this. It's literally, it tricks us. Because the world teach us not to pay attention to the details. Can, 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 I, can, I, can, I, can I walk down this and get out your way? We spend a lot of time on Facebook. From an intelligence and a literature standpoint, Facebook is the dumbest name in the world. But it's catchy. Because dumb, we know dumb things hanging on low, dumb things are low hanging fruit. It's easy to grasp. It's catchy. It's catchy. But Facebook teaches us not to ever deal with the book, just to grab the book by its cover and then run with an explanation and or a thought. Who can learn about a book by just looking at the face of the book? I ain't finished. Second one. We got Twitter. Root word twitch. An uh, in, involuntarily uncontrolled movement and or reaction. It teaches us to be quick. It teaches us to be impulsive. None of those things teach us to think. Thirdly, we got Instagram. Instant. It got to happen like this. Think about it. You, you post a reel. You only got 90 seconds. It got to happen like this. Right? Nope. Come on. That's it. It requires no thought. So it's teaching us and programming us not to think. Then you got Snapchat. Snapchat the worst. You can do it. Worst moment of your life. Don't worry about it. It's going to disappear in 24 hours. Now you got threads. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I push it a little more? Now you got threads, which is the cousin of Twitter. Everything we're being presented with, none of it teaches us to sit down and wait. Everything is about a speeded up process. Everything is about convenience. Everything is about go get it right now. And none of that stuff teach us to wait. But then scripture says, they that wait upon the Lord. The devil's in the details. What is he trying to train us to do? The goal of these things is to train us not to wait. But scripture say, if I'm trying to get my strength renewed, I have to wait on God. But everything I'm dealing with every day teaches me not to wait. So what the enemy does is, he, the, because he's in the details, we don't even realize what these things have done to us. We don't even realize how these things have changed our mindset. Literally, that if we watch a video, don't miss this. If it go on longer than a few amount of seconds, it's literally changing our attention span. Man, don't miss this. Why is he changing our attention span? Because if he can change our attention span, it kills our focus. But then if it kills our focus, what happens to our mind? Now we're all over the place. Now you can't sit still no more. Now you can't focus no more. You, you don't think it's weird that all of our kids, quote unquote, are struggling from ADHD? I need somebody to talk back to me, man. I, we don't think that's weird? That was even... A, watch this. Watch this. Watch this, watch this, don't miss, watch this. The kids were struggling with ADHD, right? That, that, there's a whole story came out on that, that how that was sort of like, not necessarily say like a man-made thing, but it was like a man-made diagnosis, right? And they hit all the kids with it. Do you know one of the first medicines that they introduced to fix it was actually giving boys estrogen, giving them breasts? The devil's in the detail. The devil, right? None of us had ADHD growing up, right? The devil's in the detail. Don't miss this. If we got any kind of ailments in our body, why haven't they came up with a cure? The devil's in the detail. Don't miss the detail. What do all these companies make? Money. What do all these companies seem to love? Money. So if a diagnosis gets you a prescription, 
I get a family a check, but then the government or whoever, the insurance company, got to give me a better check to keep you medicated, to never heal you. Doesn't that sound like something pacifying you, but not satisfying you? I'm just, I'm just teaching Bible and show you how to line up. That's all I'm doing. I'm, I'm just teaching Bible and show you how to line up because we miss it. The Bible say, for the love of money is the root of all evil. We literally live in a society where money is everything. And because folks love money, they don't mind affecting you. Well, I'm teaching better, y'all shout. So that's why I say the devil's in the detail. And he show up in ways you, you don't think because we're not looking for it. He shows up in everything. We got to learn to start asking questions. We got to start learning to ask, no, oh, no. Nah. What you, what you mean my child got that? How? Explain that to me. Because the next thing you're going to tell me, I need to be putting them on medicine. Maybe the teacher you got can connect. Can we, can, can, can I go on? Can we just talk this morning? Maybe the teacher you got can connect. Maybe it has nothing to do with my child. Maybe that person needs to learn some culture so that they can then connect with this kid who you're telling me this kid can't focus and concentrate. No, 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 no. I'm not about to give my child mind away. I'm not about to give my child brain away. No, no, no. See, the devil's in the details. We don't look at the spine print. We don't look at the end goal. The end goal is to get us in a place that we no longer think for ourselves, to get us in a place that we no longer lean and depend on God for ourselves, but we become zombies walking the earth. That's this whole thing set up to be. That's why I say he can be anything, and he's in everything that pulls you away from the will of God. You praying for your child to be successful. You praying for your child to be amazing. Now they won't tell you got to medicate him. How, way? I just prayed that God bless him. Now you gonna tell me he need no? That ain't. Now watch this. Watch this. Let me give it to me for a second. That just mean I have to seek God in every area of my life. That's all that means. I just have to seek God in every area of my life. I just have to seek God in every area of my life. Here's why. Where, where the people lack knowledge or where there's no knowledge, what happens to the people? Told you. The devil's in the detail. If there's where the people lack knowledge, scripture said they perish. So what does he attack? Knowledge. Bomb. He told us. He's trying to guard our heart and our mind. Why is God trying to guard our heart and our mind? That's the battlefield. If he can get to the mind, the rest is gone. That's why I got no problem putting this music in your son's ear. That's why I got no problem giving your son this video game that I've been having him caught jacking since he was, since he was five. I, I got no problem putting that in his hand. So watch this. If that's all I'm putting in my system, then what's going to happen when trouble's applied? What's going to happen when trouble's applied? I can only bring out of me what I've put in me. What's going to happen if the only music I put in me, because music is spiritual. You don't believe me? Go read the Bible. When the, the Bible says when the evil spirits begin to torment Saul, they sent David to play the harp for him. It was him playing the harp that soothed his spirit. Music is spiritual. But he can get us because we don't read the fire print. We ain't listening to the details. We say stuff like, oh man, I like the beat. Come on, I'm knocking on your door. I'm knocking on y'all. Y'all told me I could push. I'm not knocking on the door. But we say stuff like, I like the beat. But listen to what you're saying. Because out of our tongue, we speak life and the dead. Remember, I told you the atmosphere is programmed for what you say. The atmosphere don't know you joking. All it knows is that they came out your mouth. I know everybody want to get you something, but you really gotta say that you were. Come on, man. Come on, talk back to me this morning. We we miss it. The devil's in the details. Jesus told him, go away, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Soon as he came out of that temptation, watch what happens next. Then the devil left him and the angels came and began to serve him. Soon as you get through that temp, God is right there waiting with the Holy Spirit. To console you, to get you the way you got to go. Don't miss this, family. The enemy 
is after our mind and our heart. Because if he can get that, then he ain't even got to worry about what you pray for. He ain't even got to worry about what you ask God for. He ain't already won. Look at our communities. Got in the mind. You know, when we was young, we used to say, somebody put that joystick in your back. They, they drove you, right? So I used to be a river when I was in high school. I, I, I used to be a river. I used to be a river. I used to be a river. I, 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 was, I was bad at it. Forgive me. I, I was a river, right? And I, I would love nothing more than to drive somebody. Like, I rib them and, and have them buku mad, right? And I ain't care that, that that made it funnier, right? Especially if you got mad when I was ribbing you, that made it funnier. So now I went harder. But all the enemy wants to do is put that jaw stick in our back. But if he can get our mind, then he can move us around. You ever find yourself doing stuff you say, man, I, I said I wasn't going to do this no more. Jaw stick. I pray and ask God to fix that thing. But then I took it in my own hands. Joystick. His goal is, if I can get in the mind, I can get to that heart. Why does he want to get to the heart? Because how can I trust God when my heart is messed up? Tomorrow, we're going to deal with how do I clean up what I've let in? Sometimes we've let him in and we haven't even realized it. Now we got to fight. But we don't fight with our fists. We fight with prayer. We can pray for our kids. We can pray for our community. We can pray over our kids. We can pray over our community. Nothing is lost in God. You can't never walk run far enough that God can't grab you. You can't never fall low enough that God can't reach down and pick you up. We just have to realize how he shows up and how we have to go to God. But here's what I want to challenge you to do. I can't get to the characteristics if I'm not willing to listen. Family, I want to encourage you. Sometimes you got to let folks talk. So you can hear who you're dealing with. Because you know he can show up looking like anything and everything. You got to listen. So that you realize I'm trying to get to the details. Because the devil is in the details. If he showed up looking like a devil, we'll turn him away. He wouldn't have no success. That's why he don't come looking that way. The Bible says he's cunning. But I want you to know, he has absolutely no authority. Everything God gave us, he can't do nothing with. I told you. If, if you haven't done it, I need you to do the light experiment. This is going to blow your mind. Go into a room in your house. Please, if you, haven't, if you didn't do it yesterday, I need you to do it today so that this week can really sink in in a way. I need you to let this sink in. Go into a room in your house. You could pick, matter of fact, pick the darkest room. I want you to pick a room that's so dark you can't even see your hands. And then I want you to turn on the light in that room. Watch what happens to the darkness. It has to leave because it doesn't have enough power to overthrow the light. And the truth of the matter, here's what you learn. That darkness can only exist in the absence of light. It can only exist in the absence of light. All of us carry light. Which means as long as I'm letting my light shine, he can't win. He can only appeal to my flesh. But if I can wrap my mind around that. I can do some damage. I thank you guys for tuning in. I thank you guys for being a part. I, I pray, man, that, that this is giving you something to think about, something to mellow on, something, 
Some, something to ponder on the rest of the day, man. I pray you got something out of it, man. Y'all know how I go before we got out of here, man. Talk back to your boy. If you got something out of it, man, comment. Let me know you got something out of it. If something made sense, uh, comment something made sense. If you got something to think about, hey, man, I got something to think about leaving out here. That's the goal, man. I want you to leave here every day thinking. I want some of this stuff to start making sense. We miss it, family. It's so easy. We miss it. God laid it out so smooth for us. We miss it. But that's why we got to be stable on the word, man. If you waiting on God, wait on God. Come on. If you relying on God, rely on God. If you know God told you he going to supply your needs, then you got to wait on God to supply it. Because too many times we run from what God is doing. And we pick up with this enemy guy, and his goal is to get us to forfeit our future. His goal is to get us to forfeit our plans. So I pray you guys got something out of this, man. I pray something made sense. I pray something stuck in. And here's my key. I tell you all the time, don't get this information and then don't use it. You got to use it, man. I need you to listen. My challenge to you. This your homework. You got, you got homework today, man. You got to go do the light test. I need you to do I need you to see this for yourself. Walk into a room, look at the darkness, pay attention to the darkness, pay attention to the heaviness of the darkness, pay attention to how the dark I know some of us might be afraid of the dark. I know just just bear with it for a moment. Just pray that God which is you walking there. Just bear in it for a moment. And then I want you to flip that light on. And I want you to see how darkness leaves. For some of us that are sitting in houses where it's a heavy feel in your house and you ain't been knowing what to do with that spirit, you done went try sage and all rocks and stones and ain't none of that stuff right. You're missing the simplest thing to do. Turn on every light in your house. And you walk through that joker quoting one of your favorite scriptures. If you got to quote Psalm 23, you quote Psalm 23. You quote that scripture. If you want to quote Matthew 4 and you drive that tempter out, you do it. But all you got to do is start turning on. Okay. Ooh, here's a good one. When you was young and watched a scary movie and you got scared, what's the first thing you went did? Come on, talk back to me. You went turn the light on. This, this makes sense. Is this making sense? Turn some light on, baby. I know you say it's heaven. I know you say it's dark in there. Turn some light on. Turn some light on. Watch this. Open the curtains. Open the blinds. Let some light come in. Open your windows. Let you, you got it. Some, some of us walk around in dark houses all day, all night. That's that's where the enemy hides at. But you turn some light on, you remove his hot spots. I just, I just help somebody else. Your whole house to be pitch black, dark all day. Man, let some light in. Somebody hurt your eyes. You're going to be all right. But that's how you're going to get that heaviness off of you. That's how you get that heaviness from around you. That's how you can get them dark thoughts from around you. Let some light in. I promise you. That's how we become stable. Standing on that word that's symbolic of letting some light in. Let me pray, God. I'm, I'm, I'm five minutes over time. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we come to this morning, God, and we thank you. We thank you for those that showed up this morning to hear a word from you. And God, we pray, God, that as we continue to journey into your word, God, that you'll just continue to reveal to us more of you. Continue to reveal to us some of the things that we may have jumped over and looked past that we weren't paying attention to, God. And you are right there. God, continue to illuminate that to us, Father God, so we can continue to see you. Where we walk, God, where we go, how we talk, how we speak. God, we want to make sure that when we open our mouth, God, we're speaking from your word. We're speaking from what you've put in our heart, God. We're moving after what you told us to move after. We're running after what you told us to run after. God, we're chasing after what you told us to chase after. God, don't allow us to be running behind the things of the enemy that cause us to lose our connection with you. That cause us to lose our hope in you. That cause us to lose our faith. God, strengthen us in such a way, God, that we're able to be steadfast and stand on your word to make it through that time. God, you told us in 1 Corinthians, God, that you won't even let him tempt us on a level we're not ready, which means whatever he presents to us, even though it appeals to us in the moment, God, you gave us the strength to get through it. But God, we got to start looking at the details because a lot of times we only jump into it because we don't realize it was a trick. We don't realize it was from the enemy. Sometimes, God, we thought it was from you. But God, I ask God that you bless us and strengthen us so that we're able to get to the details so we can say what is this thing actually trying to do what is this thing actually offering because sometimes god we recognize it's offering to take us away from you 
And God, we all pray too much to come out of that spot. So God, I ask that you hold my brother. I ask that you hold my sister. In the creative of your arms, God, comfort them, console them in that time, console them in this moment, God, that they're able to lean and truly depend upon you. For the God, we thank you. For the God, we bless you. We put these blessed men under your darling son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. I thank all oh, Harris. That's it, bro. Boy, didn't they teach us that song we was young? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine everywhere I go. I'm going to let it shine. Light is important to overthrow darkness. The Bible says darkness still have not found a way to comprehend light. That's scripture. It still have not found a way to comprehend light. Can I, can I, can I get you to commit to something? How many of y'all going to try the homework challenge? Come, 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 come on, drop I'm going to do it. If you're going to do it, go and put in the comments. I'm going to do it. Because tomorrow I want to see what you thought. Right? Just a little pressure. Just, just a little pressure. If you're going to do the homework assignment, I want you to comment. I'm going to do it. Try it. I'm going to try it. Now, if, if you're afraid of the dog, hey, don't even worry about it. This ain't, this ain't for you. I don't want to mess you up. I don't want to mess you up if you're afraid of the dog. But if you ain't afraid of the dog, right? And even if you like the dog, you know, some of us got the blackout curtains and the, you know, or the blackout curtains. Okay, Sister Carrie, you did it. What you thought? What you thought, Sister Carrie, when you did it? But, see, some of us got the blackout curtains and the heavy, you know, the heavy blinds and the sheer curtains. And, not, not sheer, sheer secret, right? Yo, come on, I ain't, I ain't a curtain expert. Don't hold me accountable. But I know they got blackout curtains, right? They got the blackout curtains that it don't let in no light, right? Don't let in no light. So your, your room be pitch black dog because you say, I can't sleep with no light on, right? <laughs> I, I can't sleep with no light on, right? You can't sleep with no light on. And I want you to make your room dark and I want you to turn the light on. Watch what happens to the darkness. You won't hear no fussing. You won't hear no negotiation. It instantly leaves. The same thing happens when you turn your light on. Darkness runs. Runs. Uh, Corinne said, you got you got them blackout curtains? But them blackout curtains have room dark, boy. I don't like that, man. Cause you like if, if if I miss my alarm clock for 5:30, I need to see that sun. Like I need to see that. Like my wife like them. I, I need to see that sun, man. That messed me up. I, I need to see that light, cause when I that light in my eyes, I'm gonna wake up. But boy, y'all be having some of the room so dark, man. You can't, man, you can't even see your hand, man. I'm, I'm good. 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 Try it, man. Turn the light off. It's, it's, it's an easy thing to watch. Pay attention, cause we we'll, we'll, we'll pay attention to the light, to the darkness leaving. Turn that off, man. Watch how fast that darkness leaves. That's the same way it happens spiritually. But let me get out y'all with, man. I love you guys. I thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for being a part. Y'all know how I go before we get out of here. I do not know the last time you heard it. I do not know the last time somebody told it to you. But I want to let you know, man. I love you. That's it, man. I love you. That's a song that says it feels good, so good. Loving somebody when somebody loves you back. It feels good, so good. Loving somebody when somebody loves you back. Take God's grace. Take God's mercy. And take God's peace. Until we meet again, y'all know what it is, man. Peace.